In this video, we're going to look at using DNS verification when setting up a reverse proxy. Why do this? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi guys, so this video is a follow on from the video I made a few months ago about setting up a reverse proxy. So if you haven't watched that video first, then please go across and watch that video now and then come back and see this one later. Now I've had quite a few people contact me saying they're unable to use Let's Encrypt to create a certificate for them. And that's because their ISP is blocking port 80, so it can't verify the domain. So in this video, we're going to look at working around that and using DNS verification instead of using HTTP. So by doing this, it makes no difference if your ISP blocks port 80, you can still verify and validate the certificate. But there's also two other advantages to using DNS verification over HTTP. And the main advantage is that you can use a wildcard SSL certificate. So what this means is for your domain name, you can create just one certificate that will work with all of the subdomains that you create. So no need anymore to create individual certificates for each subdomain. And the other advantage is because obviously we're not using HTTP for verification, then we don't need to have port 80 open on the router. So that's one less port, so a little bit more secure. Okay, so that's the advantages. Are there any disadvantages? Mm, on a home server, I'd say really pretty much none at all. Well, the only one I can really think of, and really I don't think it's much of a disadvantage at all, is you have to use your own domain name. When using HTTP verification, we can just use a subdomain off DuckDNS. So you could use something like mysonar.duckdns.org as your subdomain, and you wouldn't have to buy a domain name. But obviously for DNS verification to work, you've got to have full control over a domain name, so you're going to have to buy a domain. And to register a domain name nowadays is under $10 a year. So really, I think all of us should be using our own domain name when using a reverse proxy. Okay, so let's get started and find out what's different from the first video and get all of this set up. So the first thing we need to do is to create a Cloudflare account. So let's type into Google Cloudflare. And then click on to sign up. Then here we need to create an account, so pop in your email address and choose a password. Then just click create account. Then next it's going to prompt you to add your domain name, so I'm going to pop mine in here. And now it's going to query the existing DNS records for that domain. Now here we just have to select a plan. Now it's fine to select the free plan, that will work absolutely fine. And once you've chosen your plan, then you'll get the results from the DNS query. So just scroll down to the bottom of the page here and just click on to continue. So for Cloudflare to be able to manage the DNS of our domain, we're going to have to change the name server so it points to them. And there's two name servers that we need to change. So I'm going to click on the first one here and click copy. So now I'm going to switch across to the website for my domains registrar where I can change the name servers. So I'm going to scroll down here and where it says name servers, click on to change and then custom and then paste the first one in here. Now your registrar, the web UI may look a bit different, but the process will be exactly the same. So you want to go back and then choose the second one and then paste that in. And then I'm going to click on to save. And so now with my name servers changed with my registrar, I'm going to go back to the Cloudflare website and click here on to continue. Next, it will say that the site isn't yet active. Basically, the name servers haven't actually propagated through pointing through to Cloudflare. Normally, actually, it only takes a few minutes, but it does say it can take up to 24 hours. But just try refreshing the page, and when the site's active, it will say so like it does here. So now we just need to click onto the DNS button at the top, and the DNS we see here will be whatever was set up with our registrar. That will have been copied and put into here. Now I'm just going to add a new C name here right in Cloudflare. I'm going to add the subdomain Sonar. And that's going to point across to my dynamic IP tracker, in this case, DuckDNS. Okay, so now let's move on to the important part of how to use Cloudflare to do the DNS authentication for our Let's Encrypt certificate. So in the top right hand corner, click on the person icon and then click My Profile. 
Then once here, we want to scroll right down to the bottom of the page. And in the box where it says API keys, we want to click on view the global API key. To view this, we have to put in our Cloudflare password, tell them you're not a robot, and then click on to view. Now we want to copy this API key. Now we can minimize the web browser, and we need to go onto our Unraid server, open the terminal window, and type in the command you can see here on the screen. This will make sure that the cloudflare.ini file is editable when we open it next. So now we want to browse to our app data folder and go to the let's encrypt folder and open the dns-comp folder here. And using a proper text editor, we want to edit this file here, the cloudflare.ini. I'm using OSX, so I'm going to use TextMate to edit the text file. But if you're using Windows, I'd suggest using maybe Notepad++. And what we want to do is paste over the API key with the API key that we copied out of the Cloudflare Web UI a few moments ago. Then next, we need to change the email address here from the example to the email address which we used when we signed up for Cloudflare. Then that's all the edits we need to do. So now we just need to save the file over the top of the other one and replace the file. And now we can close all of this. Then let's go back to our browser and then to the Unraid Web UI. And then we want to go down to Let's Encrypt and then click Edit to edit the template. Okay, so let's scroll down and make some changes to the template. You can see here that I put in my port numbers, my email address and the domain name I'm creating a certificate for. But now under Subdomains, because we're using DNS verification, we can actually create wildcard certificates. So if I was to type in wildcard here, Let's Encrypt will create a certificate that can be used with any subdomain off my main domain, reverseproxy.me. So that's really useful if you add future subdomains, you don't have to come here and create additional certificates. But of course you don't have to use a wildcard. I could just put in the one subdomain sonar and that would work fine as well. I'm going to change only subdomains to true. And for validation, obviously we need to change that from HTTP to DNS. And for the type of DNS plugin, we need to type in Cloudflare and scroll down and click apply and done so now the let's encrypt container is restarted with that configuration so now let's go across to the right hand side and click on view log and we just need to wait a few moments just to check everything's fine and you'll see it says it's waiting 10 seconds for dns changes to propagate and then when everything's done and there's no errors you should see server ready at the bottom and you're good to go Okay, so that's it. That's the SSL certificate created. And if you've created a wildcard certificate, then that's going to be good for any future subdomains that you point through to the server. You don't need to create a new separate SSL certificate for each new subdomain, so that's pretty useful. Well, I guess there's not much more to say about this really, so that brings us to the end of the video. So as always, if you like the video, then please hit the like button and share the video with anyone who you think might like it too. And again, I want to say a really big thank you to the guys who make these videos possible. Thanks to all my patrons out there who support me. I really appreciate it. And also thanks just to everyone who watches my videos. Well, it's time for me to go now. So I just want to say whatever you're up to for the rest of the day. I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.